Do you want an eye-catching, engaging SharePoint intranet that's branded with your colors and fonts? Maybe you've got an existing SharePoint intranet which is a bit dusty and boring. Well, join me to discover how Origami's products can achieve a new modern looking interface. In this video, I'm gonna show design examples and show you what is possible to achieve using Origami. I'm giving them a fair review and we'll discuss both pros and cons of the product. Now this product will allow you to build really cool, modern looking SharePoint intranet designs really simply and quickly. You don't need to be a web developer. You don't need to be a graphic designer. It will just give you sort of along with the package, everything that you need to make really cool looking designs. Now I'm going to be looking at this from a kind of unboxing perspective to give you my honest opinion. Now I've seen a lot of videos about this product already. There's a lot of buzz around it. I've seen a lot of videos. In fact, actually on the right hand side of YouTube where the suggested videos are, quite often Origami is mentioned next to some of my own SharePoint internet videos. So what I did is I reached out to them and asked if I could get access just for a short period of time to look over their product if I was to give them a product review on my own YouTube channel. So this is what I found. I'm gonna start off by showing you some of the designs which are possible to build using the Origami product. So let's take a look. So I'm gonna show a couple of different designs which are some of the most popular kind of look and feels. Of course, with all of this, it's using SharePoint type web parts. So you, if there's something you like of this first design, and something you like of the second design, you can merge them together. It's not like an all inclusive type thing. You can choose to mix and match some of this different functionality. But on this first design, what stands out to me straight away is like the use of GIFs in the background. Now, obviously you could change this image to be whatever you want, but I really like this kind of like moving aura kind of thing in the background. It looks really cool. Um, other things which stand out as well is the use of being able to actually use that person's name. So it knows I'm logged in as Dougie Wood, so it's gonna say, hi, Dougie, and then you can change the message here um, to show what you like. Now, that's actually really useful and something you can't actually achieve out of the box with SharePoint is to be able to surface that user's name to them. And actually, a lot of studies show that you get a lot of engagement from people if you can show them their name. It kind of makes it feel more personalized to them. Also, you can see some very large icons. Again, depending on the demographic of your users, the large icons can be really useful. Um, the the useful in the case of quite often when they're sort of not so technical people or maybe slightly older generation, using large kind of icons for jumping directly to key business applications like timesheets or booking time off, things like that can be really useful. Again, being able to easily navigate to some of the key areas of an internet, which are quite commonly things like what are the benefits for working for that organization, uh, a company directory to find contact information, information on projects or sales or whatever it is, having those front and center makes it really useful. Plus, you're not compromising on the design. As we scroll down through this, I really like the fact that we've got some good use of almost like what I would refer to as the fold of the page. Now we scroll down, although we're still on the same home page, it feels like the context of the page has changed. Now we're looking at resources, things that we need to quickly and easily access. Again, this has got a really nice slideshow, very large icons, really useful, really easy to use actually on mobile phones but I've tested it on there as well. As I scroll down further, this is taking us to an area which has got buttons which take us directly into key documentation that we need to find. Not only has it got this search box, it's also got these large icons with um, the text next to them. And actually this is 100% driven by folders. So actually the configuration of it couldn't be any easier. It's just creating SharePoint folders. And in fact, actually if I just jump into the back end, you can see all of the folders inside of my document library these are all the folders which are driving that home page. So if I was to add more folders, they'd automatically appear on the home page. So of course, jumping to key documents and folders related to projects or handbooks or training or templates, things which people need to access quickly and easily, this makes it super easy and obvious for people to find. Further down on the page, we've got more kind of content. So we've got things like news and calendar. Now, if I'm totally honest, and um, my feedback to the product team at Origami um, has been that the news web part is a little bit kind of simplistic in the sense that it actually looks very much like the out of the box news web part. It's not too dissimilar. Um, so actually, I think that they could improve that slightly by having more of a unique 
look and feel for that particular product. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily say that the news element of this is blowing me away. On the other hand, though, the calendar view, I think, looks fantastic. Compared to the out-of-the-box calendar web part or the events web part that it's now known as, um, this actually looks way more user-friendly. It's very obvious what the key dates are. It's it's the right size. Now, I tend to find with the events web part of the out-of-the-box SharePoint, the problem is you've got two ends of the extreme. One version of the layout of it is very small, quite difficult to read, and the other end is very large and just overwhelmingly big, unnecessarily big. Whereas I think this is perfectly balanced in the middle, and actually it's really nice and categorized. So you've got it color-coded, so you can quickly see what's a meeting, what's business-related, for example, um, and you can also use the same kind of feature of adding uh, almost like an RSVP um, to this as well. So it's it's all driven as well by the out of the box calendars inside of SharePoint. So all the data lives in SharePoint and it's actually clever enough that it knows if you don't have access to a particular calendar, it won't show you the contents of that calendar as well. So very much like how the out of the box calendar and events web parts work, it uses and leverages that kind of functionality as well. So really like that feature, really think it looks fantastic on the page. Something else which I think is really good is this events and social. And actually, this is a board, a little bit like Pinterest or something like that, where you can create short snippet, little um, kind of articles that you can drop on there. And this is really good for kind of events, social, um, building a bit of hype about an event or a conference or something like that, which is going on, just dropping in little bits of content here and there. And it's really simple, and it puts it in the hands of your users. Something, if we were to compare this with what you could do out of the box with SharePoint, the closest that you could probably do with this would be using a news feed. And actually, that is quite, um, not complicated, but a bit onerous for an end user to have to go and create a brand new news article page for it to then appear on the homepage. Whereas with this, we can literally just use straight into the writer post box and that will then post straight onto here. So all inside of the same interface, we can see other posts and we can create our own posts as well. So really like that feature as well. And then at the bottom, we've got this feedback box. Now, I must admit, I don't really like the use of this as a full width web part, but I could definitely see it being used in a small area of the page. Um, quite often, again, if I was to relate this back to out of the box SharePoint, how you would have to do it would be using like a call to action web part, uh, which would then open up a form somewhere else. You can embed Microsoft Forms natively into SharePoint, but it never really works properly. It looks a bit ugly and clunky. You got a lot of kind of like weird kind of like little bits of text which float around it and, and it is like an embed so it doesn't quite fit the page properly. So this looks way much, well, way better than any of those options and actually you're getting the feedback box directly into the page rather than using a call to action web part to then click a button which opens another page with a different form on it and things like that. You're getting it built into the page. So I could see this being really useful for feedback on the intranet as a whole, feedback about a project or a scheme which is running um it could be used for all sorts of different things and actually i think that this is really good that it takes out the multiple steps that traditionally that you might need to get to a feedback form and embeds it directly onto the page so i really like this design again just a quick skim back to the top of it just so you can see it again i think this looks really cool really like the user interface of this quite simple um but again sometimes simplicity is key so this is the second design that we're going to be taking a look at. Now, of course, there's loads of other designs from Origami, and actually all of the web parts are interchangeable, as I was saying before. So if there's something you like from the first option and the second option, you can always merge them together to create your own variation of this. Now, again, starting off, I love the use of imagery across the top up here. If this was a design color of green, I really love the, the, the use of this with the, combined with the buttons. And actually, that font is awesome. I think that looks really cool. Now, this particular layout, I think, would favor more kind of organizations which their users are more familiar with search. So having that search bar directly in here. Now, you do have a search bar in SharePoint across the top, but this particular search bar will allow for customizations to be able to search for key types of documents in key areas. So, for example, I'm searching, I'm looking for a template. So I might be lo looking for a... Uh, sales related template or something like that or I'm looking for applications so maybe it's a um, I'm looking to get an internal 
a new job and I'm looking for job sort of applications or employee handbooks or training, whatever it needs to be, we can filter using those buttons straight away. So that's really cool. I like that feature. Going down, again, we've got that quick links and you can see this time we've got things like timesheets, time off expenses. We've got um, the abilities as we hover over it. So it's changing the colors as we hover over. Really like that. Again, it's not so obvious the kind of navigation in your face as the first one was, um, but I think subtly it's quite nice. Again, we've got the, the ability to find these kind of key documents uh, using these kind of buttons, which again are driven by folders, very much like the, the design we saw in the first place, in the first design, but it's using different colors um, and, and it's taking up a slightly different amount of space. Um, on the right hand side though, we've got that calendar web part. Now, this is very much like we were looking at the events before, but it's presented to us as a calendar. So if we were looking for things which are going on on a particular date range, we can choose to span that between a start and an end date. And then unfortunately there's no events for hit for me to show, but then it would show the events that we could uh, then see. So we've also got this kind of scrolling option again. So this is a great way of navigating using imagery as a visual way to navigate. Again, we've got that posts option, so we can quickly drop in kind of posts onto here, um, and we can combine this with anniversaries. So actually, that kind of posting option on the previous page, we were considering maybe using it for events or conferences and building up uh, awareness, whereas actually these welcomes could be onboarding. So these are new people joining the organization. Maybe we could drop a little picture of them in there, a little bit of text about them bio, what team they're joining, what their interests are, things like that. And it's a great place to kind of then see who's joining the organization. The anniversaries, though, is people maybe that have already kind of joined, and it could be work anniversaries, it could be birthdays, but again, it's all about building that kind of engagement and that kind of like factor of going back and seeing new content on the internet homepage. And I really like this kind of anniversaries. It, it's it's a free way of kind of giving a bit of kind of uh, recognition, a pat on the back to employees to sort of say, look, we know you're there, we care about you, happy birthday, or congratulations for working us for, with us for X amount of years or something like that. So I really like those concepts of having a welcome area and an anniversaries area. And then again, at the bottom, we've got that feedback box um, built onto the page. So as a second design, again, really like this kind of look and feel. Um, quite simplistic, again, quite clean, um, but it sort of favours more people that are maybe searching for content rather than using kind of navigational buttons to get them there. So what are my favourite things about origami? So after playing around with this for a little bit, I realised that actually the number one thing which sets this apart from many other products I've seen before is how easy it is to install. Realistically, it takes not, not even five minutes, like not even five minutes. I mean, okay, I understand SharePoint quite well. I understand a lot of the different products, but realistically, I think I could get my mum to install this in under five minutes. It's that simple to use. Um, a lot of other products that I've seen, you have to know quite a bit about some kind of not exactly pro code but you do need to be quite technical um, to install them and to maintain them over time but this really is super simple to install for me the unique selling point of this product is how simple it is to deploy all we need to do is create a new sharepoint site so i'll go and create a site maybe call it the hub or whatever you wanted to call your internet site and you can see this is what it would look like out of the box with no configurations and no origami added on top of it. Then what we would do is once we've purchased the origami product, we'd then be sent a link in which we can then go and deploy the suite of origami products directly into our SharePoint intranet site. So that would look a little bit like this. We would log into it and we can select all the products that we want. So I would go ahead and I would select all of the products that from origami that we wanted to install. And then we scroll to the bottom and we would copy and paste inside of the box our URL of our internet site we've just then created. Then all I need to do is select to say, actually, I want to include all the sample pages, which are free designs, which are created by Origami that get installed directly into your SharePoint site. And we can see these are all the different pages which are automatically installed. So it gives you some great ideas. So not only are you getting all the different products from Origami, but you're also getting some pre-built designs to give you ideas of what this could look like. 
And here's a bunch of different designs. So these are all the different designs that you can have automatically installed for you to give you a bit of an idea of what you can achieve. And as you can see, they're all really good, modern, sleek looking, way better than kind of out of the box kind of designs. So what elements could be better about this product? So originally when I was talking to the designers of the product, they were very much bigging up the features of that you can change the fonts, you can change the colors. Now, you can change colors out of the box in SharePoint using color themes, but you do need to be uh, quite technical minded to be able to do that because it requires you to know about PowerShell and some other technical things which maybe you don't necessarily know as part of your day job if you were deploying this. The good thing about Origami is that you can deploy it and you can configure it with no code, no technical knowledge. It's all through the user interface. It's really useful in that way. Um, but as a downside of this, I would say um, you can't change the fonts and the uh, colors in all areas of SharePoint. It's only referring to the web parts that are being used in origami suite of products. They do offer a text web part, which does allow you to embed text onto the page and you can change the fonts to be whatever you like. So that is really good. I would recommend that. That's a good way of getting the fonts on there. But for anyone who's like really branding nuts and font nuts, you can change the fonts basically anywhere inside of the page, but that top area bar of SharePoint um, is going to remain as SharePoint fonts um, and um, any colors that you can change, uh, you'd have to change via the SharePoint color palette rather than through the Origami product. So that's the only thing I would say um, from my perspective, from a design is kind of missing, but I understand why. I raised this concern with the product team at Origami, and they told me why they consciously made the decision to do that. The reason being is because, actually, if they were to change any of those things which are above the page, that's essentially changing the way that SharePoint is structured. And if then if any updates came from Microsoft to suddenly change that layout, that could break their product overnight. And what they wanted to basically assure their customers is that this product will never break. It will never just break overnight. So to achieve that, what they need to do is make sure that they do not clash with any of the code or any of the kind of elements of the page which are truly SharePoint and are owned by Microsoft. So once they explain that to me, I do 100% understand why they made that decision. But just for ultra branding kind of nuts out there, um, you do need to understand that you're not going to be able to change the colors and the fonts of everything in SharePoint but you can change them on the kind of origami key web parts. As I say, use that text web part to make sure that you can get your branded fonts in the actual page itself. My number one favorite feature of origami has to be this header section. It is so useful and makes such a world of difference to the overall design of your internet. It's so simple when you go into edit mode to actually change. So by selecting this, I can click on the edit web part and you can see I can change things like the height of the carousel. So I can make it much smaller or much larger if I wanted to. Um, I could choose whether I wanted to make it slightly darker so my text will stand out even clearer if I wanted to. Um, you can have news posts um, appearing in there if you wanted to. And also it's so simple just to change the colors um, inside of here as well as the fonts and a whole bunch of other settings as well. Now, you can be very specific about the colors that you want in here. Now, I did ask the question to the brand uh, team at Origami about how the colors are applied to their package of products. And there's no kind of default kind of center. One thing that I thought would, could be better is that there would be like some kind of overarching set of colors that you would install into the product. And they said they used to do that in the first kind of versions of the products, it did do that, but they got a lot of requests um, and 80% of people actually wanted to be very specific about the colors that they choose for individual web parts because quite often a lot of brands will have multiple colors not just one or two colors they have multiple colors that they want to include so you can be very specific about the colors that you choose to use inside of the banner using this property section so for me that has to be the number one selling feature of this product it has to be this header area it looks super cool when i was speaking with a product team at origami i had a number of questions for them and it turns out these questions I had weren't the first-handed answer to them. In fact, actually, they were frequently asked questions. 
So I'm going to jump in and just do a little bit of a kind of frequently asked questions, what my question was and what the answer that their product team gave me. So the first question that I had for them was, well, where is all of this hosted? Where is the data going to actually live? Is it going to live on some cloud server or server that they host in, in their kind of organization? The answer is no. Actually, once you install this, it's a set of products installed into your SharePoint environment. They don't have any access to it. The next question I had for them was about licensing and how that worked. And in fact, the way that the license modeling works is that you buy it once. You just buy the whole set of products and install it into your environment. There are offers um, for support or annual updates, which get you essentially new features and new web parts and things like that deployed, but they are optional. Essentially, the way it works is that you just buy it the once and then install it, and it's all on your environment. There's no data that's hosted elsewhere. There's no access that they have to your environment. Once it's installed, it's all owned by you. The last question I had for their product team was, will this ever break if there's any updates from Microsoft? Because for me, the biggest risk of having a product like this is because it is being custom built, is that potentially there is a risk that something could break if Microsoft was to release a new update overnight. And actually, they assured me that no, it will never break. The reason being is it will not actually impact any of the code that SharePoint has. Essentially, think of it as almost like modules which live on the page, which are kind of self-governed. They live uh, within themselves. So they don't actually interact with SharePoint that sits on the outsides of it. So no, it will never break. There's nothing which is interacting directly to the kind of the SharePoint core elements of the page. So even if they were updated, origami will not break overnight. I hope you enjoyed this video and discovering the world of what is possible using origami. If you want to find out more about this product, there's a pinned link in the comments below, and there's also a link inside of the description in the video below. Check out the website through that link so you can find out more about the product, its pricing, and what it can do for your organization. You can also book a free demo on the website. Thank you very much for your time watching this video, and go and check out some of my other videos about SharePoint design.